From behind the Redwood Curtain in the heart of Humboldt County, it's the Carol Escobar Show. Tonight, Amy Berkowitz from KHUM Radio, a special grouping of the Arcata Interfaith Gospel Choir, and Bobby Keene, Corporate World. And now, here's Carol. Okay, so I don't know about you, but this is my favorite time of the year. Why is it my favorite time of the year other than just being the holidays? Hello! Truckers Parade. Oh my God, have you seen so many lights in your life? You know, we are one of the only places, I think, that has such a major event such as the Truckers Parade. I mean, I would think that they could probably say the Truckers Parade in Eureka, California, the largest one of its kind in the world. I think you can get away with that with anything, right? The largest one of its kind anywhere in the world. Anyhow, the Truckers Parade is just my absolute favorite thing to do during the holidays. Well, first of all, it's free. Any of you that know me, okay, I'm a little on the frugal side, but I love the Truckers Parade. So you know, you get your chairs all set out during the daytime, and then, you know, you get your families all bundled up, and you bring your snacks, and you just sit and you watch, and, and the parade comes to you, right? I mean, it's the Truckers Parade. Nowhere else in the world are you going to see anything like the Truckers Parade. So Eureka, California is just my favorite place to be during the holiday season. Okay, so there's a few more things happening than the Truckers Parade, but I get really excited over the Truckers Parade. All right, well, I'll calm down a little bit, but I hope you all have a chance to get out and see the Truckers Parade. If you're watching this after the Truckers Parade, God help you, I hope you had a chance to see the Truckers Parade, because what is Christmas in Humboldt County without the Truckers Parade? In fact, I got this little background thing going on because I thought it reminded me a little of the Truckers Parade. I don't know why, it just does. I don't know, deer and trucks and arr, bears and trucks, lights and trucks. I mean, the Truckers Parade is just crazy fun, and it is very unique. Woo! That was my little sign to the truckers out there. Merry Christmas, everybody. Happy holidays. Whatever you're celebrating this month, may you be joyful, be safe, and hopefully be surrounded by a lot of love and trucks with light. Well, I'm so pleased on this holiday show to have the wonderful Amy Berkowitz. Now, a lot of you know her from KHUM, but uh, here she is in person. Amy, I am so happy to uh, welcome you to the Carol Escobar Show. Thank you. It's been an ambition of mine for a long time to be <laughs> here. Actually, it has. We've talked about this for a long, long time. We have. Amy and I run into each other once in a while, uh, most notably on uh, the pun evening, the yes. uh, annual pun event. And at local event. theater. Yes, we see each other a lot at the theater, too, which is something, you know, I'm very passionate about. And you are, too. You are an amazing theater goer. Well, I, my oldest son is an actor. Yes, he and, is. And um, we have a kind of what we call our other child. Um, one of his friends lives with us, and he's in a lot of local shows and has a beautiful tenor voice. So we try to see things that, you know, we have to go where our kids are, and then, you know, they all have good friends. And so we end up seeing almost every local show because we know somebody in the cast, at least half the cast, usually. Well, then you kind of have to go, right? Yeah. You see, it's like, and, and you can't leave during intermission just in case something's gone wrong. I, I it's would like, never no, do that. You got to stay. You got to stay. <laughs> so let me ask you: uh, You and Cliff are the founders of K Hump. That's right. It's our middle child. Um, we uh, came up with the idea way back in 1981, and it took us a number of years and a lot of luck and a lot of miracles before we put it on the air. 15 years later, um, and then after that we got Kesla and put it on the air, and then we bought The Point, and then we bought KXGO, so now we have like a big happy family, and I work with the most amazing, intelligent people. I'm so lucky. Well, I've been down there, and I've met a few of them, and they are absolutely wonderful. And what's amazing... And they're characters. Uh, yeah, <laughs> let me tell you, yeah. Well, what's so impressive to me is it's such a community-oriented station, and the fact that you have live people there, live disc jockeys, live people talking to you through the radio. Yeah, That doesn't we, happen all the time. No, it doesn't, and, and that was a big part of what we wanted to create was um, people who live in the community, who are involved in the community, um, you know, we want our businesses to grow, our local businesses to grow, and our community to prosper, and, and that's kind of how we do it. <laughs> there are other ways to make money that are a lot easier, but, um, wow. but this is fun. Yeah, and, most And definitely. we're able to accomplish some good. And, you know, every year, um, usually the week after Thanksgiving, we do a whole week of broadcasting with Food for People, the Food Bank for Humboldt County, to help with their holiday spirit food and fun drive. Um, and typically we bring in about 25% of what they get for their holiday drive. That's amazing. And um, that's just one example of what we do in the holiday season. That's a great way for me to kick things off. Um, and I've been very passionate about supporting them because a long time ago, um, what a lot of people, a lot of people know that I'm on the radio. Some people know I'm a landscape architect and a mom and an artist and all the other stuff I do. What a lot of people don't know is that I used to be a teacher. And my first teaching job was in East LA. 
in the late 70s. And I had kindergartners who were fainting on Monday because they hadn't eaten since government lunch on Friday. Wow. And so I'm really passionate about the Food and Fun Drive because it's a great way to let people know about our food bank and all the great programs that they do um, with 25% of the kids in our community at risk of hunger and seniors. I mean, these are working families and innocent people and so I put a lot of energy behind this one, and luckily my coworkers are like, "Yeah, yeah, if you're such a big deal about it, you know, let's let's do it for a week." Um, well, what a great thing to be involved in, and you know, the holiday season is just that extra reminder that food for people exists. But mm -hmm. you know, something that you know people want to keep in mind is, you know, all year long that's there are right. people out there going hungry. And so. there's back they do their backpacks for kids program where they send kids home on Friday with a, you know, an ordinary backpack, but it's full of you know kid friendly things like cereal bars and. Um, peanut butter and jelly and bread and you know stuff to get them through the weekend it's just the kind of thing that a lot of kids need and and it makes a big difference and you can't learn and you can't be a good citizen if you're really hungry you know yeah. so um, that's one of the things we do and then on the lighter side this time of year I like to do something called stories of the season and I've asked community members over the years to bring me stories some of which are told and some of which are, are written for us and uh, Monday through Thursday evenings at nine o'clock I play a story and and then um, from 6 o'clock on Christmas Eve all the way through till the end of Christmas at midnight, we do one story per hour and play nothing but holiday music. Oh, wow. So it's and is of, that on K-Hum? It's on K-Hum. Okay. It's a way to just like, you know, gather the family around the fire and open presents and eat goodies and drink eggnog and nice. you know and as I as I'm fond of saying you know if Mrs. Santa Claus could be Jewish it would be my job. <laughs> <laughs> now I was going to ask you so yeah how do you celebrate the holidays? We do several things I and mean, first of all we celebrate Hanukkah, Christmas, Solstice, Kwanzaa and New Year's well, and then we it. do Chinese New Year's and Thai New Year's also. You have got it so, all covered. Uh, yeah <laughs> our, our family motto is kind of like if it's worth doing it's worth doing over the top. Absolutely. Um, so yeah we do celebrate all the holidays. Uh, Christmas we do three days of feasting we do a lot of presents, but I do a lot of homemade presents. I knit and I bake, and everybody gets a little bit of homemade. See, that's what I think is cool, but maybe it's just, you know, as I get older, I, I don't know, the, the things that come from the heart, you know, something mm -hmm. that you make or, you know, just inviting somebody over for a meal and just the whole the whole family time is what really mm -hmm. gets me. Yeah, and for me, my older son lives in New York. He's an actor, and he comes home. He's, he's coming home. Well, and you know he's going to be hungry, right? An actor in New York, yeah. Okay, well, he'll be eating a lot. You know, when he went off to, to college, um, we found out five weeks before he left that they did not have a meal plan at his dorms and that he was going to be responsible for not only cooking his own food, but he had to have all his own accoutrement. He had to have pots and pans and knives and all of that. And so I did the five-week crash course in how to cook with him and uh, he's turned out to be a pretty good cook and he cooks with his friends and now he has his own apartment with you know, six roommates and so it's not all about top ramen noodles I don't think he ever <laughs> went that direction to be honest I mean he there were a couple of I'm sure that some of his friends probably got really sick and tired of pasta bolognese or hamburger stroganoff but for the most and sandwiches uh, for the most part yeah he cooks he cooks pretty well. So let me ask you, let me get back to the storytelling yeah. night. Will you like read just uh, Christmas books and then you might have somebody just come in and just uh, tell a story? Can they make up stories? I've or? had people write stories just for us. I've had storytellers tell us stories. Some of them are about winter. Some of them are Hanukkah stories. Others are Kwanzaa stories, which are not easy to find, but I have a couple really good ones. I have a New Year's story, um, a number of Christmas stories from different traditions. Uh, pretty much whatever people bring to me that has to do with the magic of the season. Absolutely. Um, you know, I feel like we're all kids inside. Well, Some I mean, of us grow up a little more reluctantly than yeah. others. <laughs> well, and I think that's nice. I mean, it, it is, it's just a magical time of the year. And, you know, however you might celebrate it, you know, and whatever your spiritual belief might be, or even if you don't have any, it's just mm -hmm. what a great time of the year this is. It can really bring people together. And uh, that's kind of what I like about Christmas is just, you know, for me, it's the family thing, like I said. Yeah, I love, I love the family thing and the food thing, but I love the lights. I am, oh, yeah. I am a raven from a former <laughs> life. I mean, if it's, it's shiny, shiny. <laughs> I mean, we, we have this beautiful curved window in the front of our house, and I put an enormous tree up, and, and it's, you know, our, our block is spectacular, and people come caroling, and 
It's nice. You know, the smells and the sounds, it's all good. Well, I'll tell you one of my favorite things is, yep, I, I don't care. Every year I get in the car and I drive around. And uh, some years are better than others, but uh, let me tell you, it's really cool when you drive down a street and everybody's really participated in that street. It's like, whoa, look at all the crazy lights. So I think it's going to be a good holiday season, don't you? I'm sure it will, and I think that next year will bring us many good things as well. We were talking about, you know, we eat really well during the holiday season because that's something that we are able to do and we choose to do. But just to, if you can remind people about how they could mm -hmm. maybe donate for food for people. Yeah, food for people. You, If you get a paper, uh, the Time Standard usually puts a donation bag. You'll find them in all the markets, at many banks and other things. You can go to foodforpeople.org. Um, there's a link at the KHUM website at khum.com. There is a mailer, a little envelope you'll find in the North Coast Journal. Um, if you cannot give money or food, uh, they're always looking for volunteers. And for goodness sake, if you're one of those people who needs help, don't go hungry. Go get help. They're happy to feed you and help you get what you need. Um, because I can't tell you for how many years I've gone out on the food drive and had people come up to us and hand us like $200 in cash and say, you were there when we needed you, now we're giving back. So just because you're taking this year doesn't mean you won't be able to repay it in kind later on. Yep, and it's all about the community spirit. And we do live in an amazing place. You know, usually I spend most of my time with my interview guests talking about the arts and stuff. And mm -hmm. we're both huge art lovers, theater <laughs> goers. There's going to be a lot of choirs uh, mm -hmm. to go here and a lot of concerts and theater things going on out there. So just a reminder, you know, if, if you have the ability to reach out and help someone this holiday season, uh, there's a lot of people out there who would really appreciate it. So, you know what, Amy, the time goes by fast. Thank you very much for coming and sharing a little bit of your time. I know you're a very busy person. And thank you for all that you do. It just sounds wonderful. And hopefully uh, we've uh, reached a few people tonight who maybe not, maybe they didn't know about what was going on out there for the, mm -hmm. with the food for people. And uh, hopefully you'll get a really good turnout again this uh, year with uh, food. And um, let's just uh, make sure we help each other out during this holiday season. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you. It's been my pleasure. And I know Humboldt County is an amazingly generous community. So I have no doubts that everybody will rise to the challenge. It is indeed. Well, happy holidays to you and your family. And to you too. All right, Bobby King Corporate World is back. And well, you know what? Their holidays aren't quite as happy as they should be, but ah, what are you going to do? It's Bobby King Corporate World. I have worked for Frankly Freddy's for over 30 years and I have loved my job. Well, my boss decided to sell the company and retire to Arizona. That's all good for him. I mean, he deserves it. The real issue I have is my new boss. Now, most of us don't believe that space aliens have invaded our planet and are taking over corporate America. But for those of us who do believe, have I got the boss for you. He may not actually be from outer space, but he's as close to a terrifying alien as you'll ever want to meet. Yep, this is a story about the acquisition of a great family-run business and how it's made all of our lives a living hell. Yes, this really is a true story. This really did happen. My boss is an alien. He's just not from another planet. I thought it best if he didn't figure out that this was really about him. My name is Bobby Keene, and this is my corporate world. Bobby Keene Corporate World. I gave my offer niece uh, coupons to the franchise. Maybe she'll get the hint that she should stop coming <laughs> over for Christmas. <laughs> oh, <laughs> she that is looking. terrible. Mm. You're always welcome over that right? Always. Join the crowd. Just Careful, I might take you up and leave hey. the end at home. All we have to do is pull up an extra chair at the table. You're welcome. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, both of you are. You should come over this afternoon. Mm. Yeah, you we can bring Aunt Bernice. Uh, yeah. No, no, I, that I will not click on. You know, but we keep her. Hey. Well, we just that her is over, like and I'll spend Christmas at home. Oh, no, there you go. <laughs> no, no. I don't Merry Christmas. Oh, hey. Merry Christmas. Hey, Look at that. Good to see you. You're, You're a that? good man. Yeah, you like it. <laughs> nice sweater. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Any idea what this meeting's all about? I was just about to sit down to an early Christmas dinner when I got a call from Mr. O's assistant. I can't believe. He called me at 12.40 on Christmas Day, our only day off, to say that we had to be at a meeting at 2. Still, I am so glad Mr. O at least agreed to allow the stores to close at 3 today so the employees can go home to their families for Christmas. Yes. I'm so glad. 
last minute meeting isn't that bad. <laughs> Even on Christmas. But still, why a meeting on Christmas with only a little more than an hour's notice? Maybe he has something to give us, uh, like a bonus or something. Oh, that would be <laughs> sweet. <laughs> yeah. uh, where's Matt? Uh, oh, he's in Colorado at his grandparents' house for Christmas. So. Mr. O approved it. Uh, really nice of him since uh, you know his grandfather's dying of cancer. Have you guys talked to the stores today? There's no business whatsoever. They can't wait to get home at three. Look, I didn't know what to expect since we've never been open on Christmas. Oh, Merry, Merry Christmas! Christmas. Christmas. Yes, Mr. Mr. I found out that all of you are planning on closing your stores today at 3 p.m. Now, tell me the what truth, if this is the truth, because if you do not tell me the truth, you will no longer be working here. Hmm? And if you think you are closing your stores at 3 p.m., well, again, you will no longer be working here. Hmm? Bobby, will you be closing any stores at 3 p.m. today? Well, sir, I do recall you telling us that we could close the stores at 3 today. Bobby, did I say that to you today? No, sir. Well, then no stores will be closed today at 3 p.m. <sighs> sir, what time would you like them to be closed? I mean, we absolutely have no business. It seems like nobody wants hot dogs for Christmas. <laughs> it's costing us a fortune in labor. Only I, Mr. O, will decide when and if a store is closed early. You tell me we have no one coming in today, but you are also stupid. Why should I believe you? Hmm? <laughs> I want each of you to call your nine stores every hour on the hour and get the sales figures for the past hour. Then I want you to call me and give me that information. Then, and only then, only then, will I decide, maybe, if a store can close early. <laughs> Sir, I hate to say this, but it's going to be hard to get employees to stay past 3 p.m. since that is when they're expecting to be off since it's Christmas. If anyone walks out of the door of their store before I give them permission to close the store early, they will no longer be working for me. Which one of your phones would you like us to call you with this information, sir? One of my cell phones is not working. The other is turned off. Now, <laughs> unless you are really stupid, you should be able to figure out which one to use. And remember, I am a, I'm a very busy man, so I cannot be expected to answer all of your stupid calls. But without my permission, no store will be closed early, <laughs> or you will be fired. <laughs> and if I don't answer your call, then leave a message on my phone with your information. Mm -hmm. Sir, how many hours do you want us to keep calling you with this information? I'm not the stores open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, Bobby? <laughs> Except for Christmas, sir. <laughs> Does everybody see why Bobby's question is so stupid? <laughs> <laughs> Where is Matt? Oh, um, he's in Colorado with his sick grandfather for Christmas. Mr. O, remember, you gave him permission. Oh, I gave him permission to take vacation. I did not give him permission to miss a meeting. <laughs> so he is no longer working for me. <laughs> but sir, Mr. O, your assistant called us only an hour before this meeting was scheduled. How is Matt going to get here from Colorado in just an hour? By the way, where is your assistant? He is home with his family celebrating Christmas. He is a good man. 
What are the holidays without a little choir music? Not much of a holiday at all. So welcome to our stage, the Arcata Interfaith Gospel Choir. Just a few of them, though. There were too many to fit in the studio. Just about 16 years. Oh my gosh, well that's a long time. It's a very long time. How long has the choir been uh, a choir? About 21. We started in 1991. So y'all can go out and drink now or something like that. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> You're all in legal aid. <laughs> People can go and see you throughout the holiday season. Do you have a couple dates where we might be able to check out the choir? We do. We have two Christmas concerts. The first one is Friday the 14th okay. at the Eureka Presbyterian Church. And Thank the you. following night on Saturday the 15th, we have our Christmas concert at the Arcata Presbyterian Church. Awesome. So you have a lot of opportunity to go out and hear some great choir music yes. this holiday season from some really fantastic folks. I want to thank you all for coming and making some beautiful music for us tonight. And the first song was called 
all night, all day. And we have one more song for you, and that will be called Silent Night. So sing along if you like. I think we all know the words to this one. So thank you all very much for being here, and happy holidays. Thank you. Happy holidays.
Thank you so much for joining us. I want to thank Amy Berkowitz, the Arcata Interfaith Gospel Choir, the cast and crew of Bobby Keen Corporate World, and these photographs that you see, kind of crazy, aren't they? Well, they are from Becky Olson. Thank you, Becky, for providing the beautiful photographs for us tonight. I want to wish everybody a happy holiday season, and don't forget, there's a lot of art going on out there right now. You're going to see some choirs and some musicals and some theater. There's so much going on for this holiday season that I know you'll find something that you really enjoy. So have a great time, everybody. Everybody, happy holidays, be safe, see you next year. This has been a Beaver Street production. Hot day.